uh, flying spaghetti monster, <laughs> hereby referred to as FSM for the most part, he is a deity unlike any other. His word, although lost throughout the age of man, can be found in the book which I left on my desk, which is also my visual thing. <laughs> the Gospel of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> it's real. It's right here. <laughs> now, I would encourage everyone who is interested in a light read with heavy connotation to read this book. And pick it up, look at it. <laughs> now, I read the majority of the gospel, and um, I feel confident in my ability to spread the word of his newliness. <laughs> now, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the religion itself, some highlights, holidays, and then I'm going to talk about how it came to pass. Now, FSMism, or Pastafarianism, <laughs> is a belief of a higher being, much like any other religion, except completely different than any other religion. <laughs> Although the gospel speaks of the religion being around for 5,000 years, since that's when his newliness created the universe, it peaked around 2,500 years, um, the golden age of the pirate. It was created in 2005, however, when the FSM appeared before the author Bobby Henderson <laughs> and the true creation story of the universe was revealed to him. <coughs> Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> you may say that the universe has show signs that it's been around for tens of millions of years. Now, a devout Pastafarian would tell you that this is what the FSM wants you to think. He has specifically put into place things that make the universe look older than it actually is. After he created the universe, he spent the next 10 to 100 years making it look this way. Everything you see <laughs> is what he wants you to believe. <clears throat> now it's also the Pastafarian faith associated with certain scientific findings, <laughs> such as gravity. Gravity is a farce. <laughs> it is actually his noodly appendage which holds you to the ground. <laughs> now this can be proven through average height. Throughout the last 2,000 years, the average height has gone up seven inches. Why do you think that is? I'll tell you it's because population. With more people in the world, it is harder for his appendages to keep everyone down to earth. And <laughs> thus, are, we are raising in height. <clears throat> Shorter people are obviously his favorites because he touches them more than others. <laughs> Global temperatures also share an inverse correlation with the decrease in the number of pirates his chosen people. Now what you think you know about pirates is wrong. <laughs> and I don't blame you, I blame your instructors. <laughs> pirates are actually joyous people who were well known at one point to give candy to small children and have a good time. This giving of candy also brought forth the tradition of Halloween, <laughs> which is the first of the holidays which I will speak about. Halloween is where Pastafarians are encouraged to dress as a pirate and give candy to small children. <laughs> Postover is the second holiday in which Pastafarians should eat spaghetti made in his image to celebrate the first humans to be touched by his newly appendage. Ramadan is a week to eat long enough and recall your days as a star starving college student, or in our case, just be happy that you're a Pastafarian. <laughs> International Talk Like a Pirate Day, September 19th, for those of you who are interested, is self-explanatory, I believe. <laughs> the last, hol last one is called Holiday, which actually spans somewhere around December, beginning of December, all the way into the beginning of January. <clears throat> you might know this as the holiday time of year in the business world. Not a coincidence. <laughs> Walmart was actually one of the first to adopt this. Instead of using the Christian Merry Christmas, they started saying Happy Holidays. Proof! <laughs> Proof. The Pastafarianism is taking over everything. Uh, now, just like most religions, there is one holy day of the week which must be set aside, and that is Friday. <laughs> On Fridays, Pastafarians are encouraged to relax, maybe catch a little bit of sun, 
see what's on the, the television, whatever they feel like, not be busy. <clears throat> Just as I, many of you heard me talk about Pastafarianism last week, it was uh, created to be taught alongside evolutionary theory and intelligent design. Now, it kind of bridges the gap <laughs> if you have faith. <laughs> According to the Washington Post, in 2005, the Kansas School Board was the first state ruled to teach intelligent design in public school. And before that, it was called creationism, and there was a lot of other things. Intelligent design is what it was called. And um, Bobby Henderson, seeing this, he actually wrote a letter to the Kansas School Board proposing they add FSMism to the curriculum. And as near as I can tell, the uh, letter has still not been replied to. <laughs> <laughs> However, in 2007, they did reject the rulings that they made in 2005. So perhaps it had something to do with that. <laughs> so now I believe you have a deeper understanding of what F FSMism truly is and how it came to pass. I thank you all for your time, and may his noodly appendage touch you all. Ramen. <laughs> <laughs>